So I wanted to talk about, I really, really realized how much study I've done over the last, yeah, like 10 to, 10 to 15 years in regards to um, spiritual teachings and things that I've learned and, and longer than that, but I mean, in a, in a sense of really understanding what it is to use those spiritual teachings as a way of trying to actually manifest a healing, a healing process within my physical body and because as some people know i had such a severe series of illness processes that were manifesting in my physical experience as a result of many many different layers of things um but the core things were obviously relating to trauma uh, ddt exposure as a child uh, also vaccinations as well because i had a lot of them and uh, when I became a flight attendant in 2008, I had several and it was about two years after that that I went through one of the worst flares of my life and it just got worse after that point. So they're all the little layers of things that have contributed to my healing process and where I'm at. at my, my not, not so much contributed to my healing process, but more contributed to my process that flung me even further into the spiritual teachings as a way of trying to deal with the massive problem that I'd manifested um, in the form of Crohn's and various other illnesses or symptoms. So I, when I was about 17, I remember reading a book by Deepak Chopra, which was, I think it was called Synchro Miracles or Synchro Destiny. And it was about quantum physics and it was really, really amazing. I remember being 17, having gone through quite a lot by that point and already, and I'd been in quite an abusive relationship who, with someone who was very damaged as a person and he was very, like, had a violent streak in him. So when I found this book and it talked about how you create your own reality and how it, it was like such a relief to know that what I'd created on some level I could uncreate and what I'd created on some level I could redirect and focus my attention to manifest and create a different reality. So you see a lot of this like um, law of attraction kind of communication where you know sometimes it's oversimplified in my opinion uh, often and it's often sold by people that are trying to promote a certain idea and make money from it but they don't truly understand necessarily manifestation or how that yeah how, how that actually kind of truly works <laughs> as someone who's created a lot of shit in my life <laughs> and you know i'm not putting myself down for that i grew up in a uh, very disconnected and dis disturbed energy and it's not i'm not saying it was like the most worst as some people that have been through terrible upbringings i just had a lot of space and a lot of neglect in the sense of presence i didn't have presence i didn't have proper conversations i didn't have uh, anything explained to me as a child so there was like long spans of uh, distance in my consciousness in my awareness but the pain existed within those spaces but i didn't know that because i was i never had a definition of what i was carrying or what i was manifesting because i didn't have any conversations and i didn't open up about any of those things and it wasn't normal in my environment to share some of the insights that I was having. So I wanted to, an insight that I had very specifically when I was about eight or nine years old, um, it was so vivid. I was really into beading and I was really into those crystal beads. So they're like the clear, clear quartz um, crystalline beads that have geometry shapes. And then when you hang them up or when you work with them, when the light hits them because of the geometry, um, it flecks out all these amazing colors. So I remember looking at one of mine that was hanging and it was spinning and the sun suddenly got a glimpse of it. It must have moved and the, and the branches that were blocking off in the shadows, uh, creating this image where whenever the sun would hit, this geometry was spinning and I'd see all these colors, right? And I remember really, really specifically, I'm just gonna take this off actually, it's quite warm. 
Uh, I remember specifically understanding, and I've, I've since understood it more deeply and I'm explaining it from a, a way in which I've had hindsight as a part of that process. But what I recognized is that I was the geometry and, well, okay, at the time, what I fully recognized was the geometry created all these different shadows, uh, all these different color light um, spectrums. And it was the light in one energy then re refracted into many different fractions of color, okay? And in that moment, I recognized that's what our earth is. <laughs> it's one light, one Christed body, one Christed energy, one awareness that gets refracted into a geometry, which then projects the, the frequencies or colors out into various different um, individual, individualized expressions of the whole. Okay, so when I was eight or nine and I had this image and it was very vivid, I understood very clearly that everyone was one and that we lived in a ge geometric uh, consciousness or particular container and through that container the light hits and through the different uh, edges of that uh, geometry it refracts the colors and i might associate myself with the green speck that it reflects and then you might you know associate yourself with the the gold or the pink or the orange speck and what happens is we're having an experience of being uh, an aspect of the whole while we're also the whole and we're experiencing ourselves as a certain individual color. But the problem is with our society is that it's our society replicates and mimics um, very narcissistic and manipulative kind of, um, I guess, patterns or things that haven't been resolved in our consciousness. And that also forces us to try to identify with our physicality in a way that it basically has a way of making us feel more like we have an identity or more like we have a specific kind of um, identity or frequency okay but we don't really we have we are actually all of the colors and we are actually the geometry that you know refracts the colors and we're, we are the light that comes through so since then that that image has stayed in my mind as a reference point whenever I lost sight or I felt like I was losing sight I'd come back to that and knowing it was a knowing it wasn't even an image the image aided the knowing that I already knew within myself, just like everybody else knows on a deep level, even if they've been here long enough and many reincarnations where they've forgotten who they are. And I don't mean who you are in the sense of like, yeah, you can like a certain drink and that can define you for a period of time, or you can like a certain outfit and that can define you for a period of time, but it's all temporary uh, expressions of self in that moment. We can't attach ourselves in a permanent way to those things because it, it basically defies our own law of, of our own self, of our own truth, okay? So since then I've understood that not only are we the geometry collectively, we're also the light and we're also the projection of that light in the various different spectrums of colors and frequencies that we chose to experience. Um, color as in um, energetic frequency, individual expression of the whole. Um, I'm not talking about anything to do with races, I'm talking about our colors, our energy. Um, we we could have different colored skin but we could have totally different colors but we're actually the same aspect of the oneness that we already are and we are the geometry we are the light that shines through the geometry and we are the projection where there's no separation in any of those um, aspects of the way in which we present our experience as a human being through those three different main aspects since then i've understood more about more about that image it made me understand that not only is that all of us as one it's also like i am all of the projections of all of those colors even when i only see myself as one i am the various different geometries depending on the structure that changes as a consciousness as we build into a different level of awareness through our geometry consciousness uh, when i say that because it, Geometry consciousness, I just mean in terms of it's the container which holds a certain information, which allows a certain awareness to experience itself uh, within a certain context. It's just, it's all experience. We aren't any of these actual things. We're just experiencing all of these different aspects. And I saw a great uh, talk with David Icke when he actually mentioned, he talked about the, the identity around individualism has become overbearingly, uh, an overbearingly pressured process at the moment in our society because it's being 
really hardly pushed on us as a way of identifying and buying into the capitalist society where we buy something and we say this is us this is our identity and it's just that it's a lot of this uh, stuff is fine it's just the way life is at this particular time in this particular moment that's fine but if we lose sight of the fact that we are the light we are the geometry and we are the refractive light images or projections that occur as a result of this moving geometry as this moving at this you know pure beam of light that comes through which is us if we forget that then we can be conned into believing and buying into a reality or consciousness that limits us beyond comprehension and if we keep if we allow that to occur on a personal slash collective level we won't even know um, we won't even realize that that is actually happening and that's the danger that's the danger in us and within this situation is if we forget the oneness if we forget the oneness then and we buy into the individual and we start fighting with what we perceive as separate entities i mean we're literally fighting unto our own selves and we're hurting and damaging unto our own selves and that also goes for the shadowed the very shadowed players that are playing within our collective consciousness right now that are at the end of a bell curve so you've got the front of the bell curve which is heading towards a higher higher hierarchy a higher consciousness a higher awareness a divine um, sovereign masculine and feminine like you know full integration of our sovereign queenship kingship whatever you want to call it and then we're on this bell curve you've got the masses that are sort of more you know they they jump when enough of people have been in the beginning of the bell curve and pushing that energy to you know to kind of push that consciousness in a further direction um, they're the people that are the mystics, the artists, the intuitives, the creatives, the people that are open and receptive and know the oneness, even if they don't know that as a concept to express it to somebody else. They live in terms of creativity and they live in terms of co-creation. And you've got at the end of bell curve, at the bell curve, at the end is, is all the energy and the people that are stubborn, not willing to move, not willing to transition or moving very, very slowly in the evolution. And so what happens is if people at the front of the bell curve are really pushing and charging ahead and really stepping into their own truth and really honoring who they are, really doing that like self-balancing um, healing work, you'll find that that will actually, that starts to create a space because we're moving uh, you know, through a container and when someone starts to change the consciousness, the container uh, geometry starts to change as a way of reflecting the information or consciousness that we are as a collective um, and where we are in our evolution. And so when we um, see these really uh, shadowed, um, unconscious, very shut down energies, uh, where we're talking about a lot of our ministers and politicians and people that are much higher up in that, that energy, they're working from pure and uh you know anal analyzing mind they're not working from heart within their consciousness at all and so they're really at the end and we're at an, a golden age where we have to go we're going we've been going through a doorway right and the the initial people that had done a lot of the work that were prepared were stepping through that space and creating that space and amplifying that space and and actually sort of uh, doing a lot of uh, building, they're the builders, they're the ones that are building the new reality. They're starting to envision the new reality through our consciousness and through our third eye, through our experiences, through our different chakra systems, whatever. We create from many different places within our own wholeness. And then when you look at those people and those beings, it's a polarization currently because for us to move either way, and that's not bad or good, even though it would not necessarily be an enjoyable experience to be pulled back into what we've been through the last 13,000 years in regards to in slavery, like slavery and enslavement and in regards to just like damaged consciousness or damaged awarenesses. But the, the key thing is to remember that the more that we step into our truth, the more that we honor that space, the more that we step into the builders and work with the people that are actually doing that, this reality can't stay within that bell curve unless it either evolves or it disappears it 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 reorganizes itself as energy and redistributes the energy into a new life force nothing is ever missing nothing is ever really truly dead everything changes everything goes through rebirth everything goes through that 
And so these shadowed beings are being given a, a, a current choice if they want to continue that thing, which in a way that polarization is propelling the people further up ahead. So it's actually got a oneness effect, which is interesting. Even if it seems like we've got all these different points of reflection and points of point of view, depending on where we are in our consciousness and where we are within this big soup of human. <laughs> but I, I think what we have to remember is that the more people that stand in the truth, the more that that bell curve be, is pushed towards the direction of evolution and true revolution, true evolution, true um, spiritualism, true consciousness and anchoring in that spiritualism in a very simplistic nature based um, way rather than the artificial light, which is a, lo a lot of the shadow consciousness, which is working as a way of sabot sabotaging our evolution or testing us. It's, a, it's initiation, you know. We are being tested collectively and individually about what we choose as a race collectively together. And if we understand time as being uh, many slices of the one cake at the exact same time, uh, you know, that they're, they're all existing and coexisting, but in different little slices or different little realities, we have many different aspects of ourselves in parallel reality or consciousness experiencing various different degrees of narratives that are uh, helping us identify and establish our own sovereignty so we've been given many opportunities we don't realize because our primary existence makes us think this is a linear linear uh, reality and we forget how multi-dimensional we are but while we're experiencing this reality we're exp experiencing many different realities with very various versions of this same narrative um, where we are still holding the same vibration within all of those lifetimes at the same time even if we've got different personas there's still an essence that holds us as one uh, network of light within our own soul matrix or, or grid work so I guess what I'm really channeling through which I didn't even expect it to go in this direction is that image that I had as a child at eight or nine years old of that geometry the crystal because it was a crystal it was holding uh, uh, an awareness a wisdom a consciousness and through that that beautiful light that sunlight that came through it's like all those colors are projected you, you might be pink today, you might be purple tomorrow, I might be pink now, I might be purple in five minutes. Um, we are literally continuously holographic um, reflections of this one light that is being beamed through a geometry structure, which then creates uh, an external manifestation or blueprint, um, not blueprint, sorry, uh, so I'm just thinking of the right word, uh, holographic experience that we then if we don't recognize it's a holographic experience and if we don't recognize that we're all one and if we don't recognize that we are unity consciousness experiencing ourselves as a light through the geometry refracted and projected into many different colors and we want to experience many different various aspects of our own our own bliss and our own suffering <laughs> being on earth you, you've got both you know and it, that's the dualistic nature of um, where our consciousness currently is and how we're learning to uh, find the the process that holds the beginning and the end as one um you know like what i, I wanted to talk about justin mokiha asar's work as well because his work has influenced so many people and yet um people don't even probably while they're in the in the bubble of it don't even fully realize how much it's influenced um them i think about his oracle book and i literally pick that up or have it around all the time and the fact that i'm constantly dialing in um some of the information that he has very very generously gifted to our planet and our consciousness uh, and put a lot of time and energy over many many lifetimes to be able to do that and i just recognize that i am that work that work is me but justin Moikiha asa has brought it through in a practical uh, affordable manageable way of existing which has enabled so many people to be able to identify their holistic nature and their connection to all things because he links all the animals he links all the crystals he links all the star child crystals which are um, various various other types of crystals he links uh, the the animal skulls for example um, and then you've got you just got so many elements and then when because of all the teachings i've done with him and you know going to classes where i'm learning so much about consciousness and how to manifest and how to unmanifest a lot of shitty things in your life how to frame your mind how to understand how to pair emotion with thought and those i really feel like the the image i had when i was eight or nine years old 
served to hold me into that knowing but it was through the practice of being around people who are stepping as stepping and walking as leaders as ascended masters within this plane of existence showing us many different consciousnesses that we are within us as one and how we can learn how to uh, be transient and link all of these different aspects of our own self within us as a holistic pattern because it's almost like what i see is that we have the pattern within us but it's fragmented in our memory our living memory which exists right now because we have parallel lifetimes and everything exists now there's no such thing as past and future everything is now it's like one cake with many different pieces but you only see yourself as one piece but you're actually all the pieces and so his work has actually helped me uh, fully live this as a truth and understand how to work with the crystals work with the trees work with the animals um, in understanding the image that i had when i was eight or nine years old of the oneness and the crystal geometry he even talks about geometries and how they're vehicles of uh, consciousness and he talks a lot about that in the star child work if he ever does a course and you're into that you should definitely go your life will change as a result of the work that he does is a form of a mystery school even though um, you know, mystery schools probably aren't as mystery anymore because they're starting to come into the light for people to be able to experience as a, a real reality, you know, a real reality, whatever that means, um, an experience, have an experience of an integrated holistic awareness of reality because he's done all the work of putting all these tiny little pieces together to bring back the puzzle of our own consciousness and our own, through our own memory. Um, how to, and then through working with it you're actually integrating with all the different aspects of yourself and starting to bridge them together as a healing process so I guess going through all the journeys that I went through regarding healing and um, every time I'd go to a course I'd step into one of his courses and I would just have to I'd, I'd firstly go through so much embodiment shifts because I'm very sensitive and I was already going through a lot of body stuff as it was because I was my my body physical vessel wasn't able to sustain the energy energetic shifts that were happening and because it had built like a real uh, fragility to it and I had to slowly build my physical body um, while also trying to do the spiritual work and allow so my body could contain and work with it and it's very difficult when your body's got leaks and not, I don't I just mean in the sense of energy wise like you just when you don't realize you're giving your power away in various forms based on whatever dysfunctional you know programming you've received or experienced at some point and when you work with this really highly potent intense spiritual kind of work you find that any holes it's like someone pours the water in full on and it just starts coming out and so his work has had a lot a huge influence on me among many many other things i'll talk about that in another video but i just wanted to explain why the liquid crystals are so powerful and how they have i've seen them change other people's lives and people have seen my life change as an observer seeing how sick i was sometimes turning up to classes and courses and i did so much work outside of that but that gave me the foundation to be able to fully excel in who i am as a person and to be able to be here and, and do this i couldn't do this if i hadn't connected and worked with the liquid crystals on the level that I have and I don't even know what this is like what's this video I don't even know but I mean this is in I couldn't fully understand and be present and able to put all these pieces together of my childhood and the images and the visions that I had when I worked in Justin's stuff it explained so much of that so I just wanted to share that and share my little vision when I was young because I've been thinking about things that are really important moments for us we all have them we have moments where we realize we're one or where we realize we've got more in common than we have in separation where we suddenly go oh like maybe this love is what I need and this is this is exactly it's something sometimes you think you need something more complicated and it's just a moment that can just completely shatter your illusions just through a realization and I find I've had many of those through Justin's work and through reading his Oracle reading the books that I've got from the courses so Thank you very much, Justin, for all of your amazing contribution to our spiritual evolution as a race. And uh, thank you so much for anchoring this on this plane at this time. I don't know how we could get through what we're going through if we didn't already have, like, you know, however many thousands of practitioners. I'm sure there's quite a lot. But yeah. So if you're interested in the liquid crystals, uh, you can go check out their website or on Insta Instagram. You can keep up with their daily frequencies, which come up with the animal and the geometry, I think, and the mineral content. And it just is a really good way to stay in tune with the earth energy. 
but also if you are wanting to step into being a practitioner um, keep an eye on their site for when they um, open up site uh, courses and stuff again because most people that go to those courses once they've gone a few times like I you become mates with them because you see them every time even if you've done the course 10 times you'll still go because you know that every time you go there for something you go there to pick up something to understand something to connect with somebody to receive a larger understanding of self and that's what it offers so yeah but um Thank you so much for listening and thanks so much for uh, allowing me to share part of my journey and i i do want to keep doing these videos i just let them come as they come through so i hope that this is uh i hope this has been interesting information for at least one person that's all that really matters uh, thank you so much i love you and um, i hope you have a beautiful beautiful week Yo.